Welcome back to another round of Grace Kids Online. I'm so excited to be with you again this morning, talking about some truth and some stories from the Bible and the Word of God, and just learning about that together. And so today, as we come together, I just want to go over our memory verse we've been doing for the last two weeks. We, we are going to continue talking about that verse this week, and that is found in Psalm 150, verse 6, and it says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So if you can say that with me, that'd be great. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And once again, that is found in Psalm 150, verse 6. And so today, as we're talking about God's word today, we're going to go back to the Old Testament to a story um, way before Jesus' time, back in history. And at this time in this kingdom, there was a king named Nebuchadnezzar. And he wanted all the people in his area to worship him and his gods that he believed in and not the one true God that we believe in. And so in this time, he had set up a big, huge, like 90 feet tall gold statue. And in all the areas, he sent people out to bring together all the leaders and say, whenever you hear the music, you're to bow down and worship this big gold statue and bow down to it and worship his gods. Well, in that country, in that area of Babylon, there were three guys that lived there, and their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they believed, like you and me, that there's only one God. So they did not agree to worship and to bow down to this giant gold statue that, that the king wanted them to bow down to. And so one day when the music played and everyone bowed down, some people told on them. Some people said that they were not bowing down and they, they were not listening to the king's orders. And so the king brought them in to have a meeting and to meet with them. And he asked them, is it true that you won't bow down to my statue? Is it true that you are not doing this? And they said, yes, like, we're not going to do that. We don't believe that that's true. We don't believe that that is something that we are supposed to do. And so he was angry with them. He said, you have one more chance. If you don't do it, I'm going to throw you into a burning furnace, into a burning fire. And so the next time the music played, they did not bow down because they knew that doing that would go against their, their, their belief in our one true God. And so the king was very, very angry. And he said, bring them in. We're going to throw them in the fire. And he was so angry, he told the people to make the fire seven times as hot as usual. So not one time hot, but two, three, four, five, six, seven times hot. And so it was super hot. And they brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in. And they tied them up right there in their clothes. They tied them up. And they brought in their strongest soldiers to throw them in this fire. But the fire was so hot that it was hard to get close to. And, and King Nebuchadnezzar said, he gave them one last chance to bow down to the idol. And they said, no, our God can save us. And their response in this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read right here from Daniel 3. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. And so the king ordered that they would be thrown into the fire. And the fire was so hot that the soldiers that threw them in died because of the heat and they didn't even go in the fire and they died because it was so hot just throwing the guys in so they threw the guys into the fire and they're tied up can you walk around like you're tied up can you do that and they threw them into the fire and all of a sudden the king asks the people with him didn't we throw three men in the fire because he's looking in the fire and he sees the men walking around in the super hot fire. He's like, but I see four and one of them looks like a god. And so 
he calls to them in the fire and says, and he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out here. Come here. Can you cup your hands like you're yelling? He said, come out here. Can you do that? Come out here. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego come out of the fire, and they come before the king. And the people notice that it didn't even look like they had even been in a fire. Not one hair was singed. They didn't look hot. Their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. And so they looked at them kind of in disbelief, like, what is happening? They didn't even smell like smoke. And so they knew then that God had saved these people and King Nebuchadnezzar was like, no one is ever going to speak bad about your God again. Because he is the only God that can save. He's the only God that can rescue from this. And, sh and so we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They do this and they know that God is going to take care of them. They know that God is going to keep them safe. But even if God had let them die in that fire and go through that, they weren't going to go against him. Because they said, even if God doesn't save us, we will not serve your, your gods. That's that what they told the king. And they had trust in that. And some people think that the fourth person in that fire was Jesus. Some think it was an angel and different things. But either way, God was with them. And just like God is with us when things are hard, God is right there with us in the middle of the hard stuff. In the middle of everything going on in our life, God is right there with us, just like he was right there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so today, as we think about this story, and we think about them saved from this fire, because they stood up and they obeyed, no matter if it was going to be hard, they did the right thing, no matter what other people said, no matter what the consequences were going to be, they were going to do what God wanted them to do. And because Jesus and God, they stay beside us no matter where we go. And so this week, as you think of that, I want you just to think about this and think about this together and talk about this together. Like, when was a time that you knew God was right there with you? When, when was a time that you wanted to do the wrong thing? but God was right there and encouraging you to, to do the right thing. And talk about what are some things that help you know right from wrong? Like how did they know not to serve those gods and to choose to worship God only? How do we know right from wrong? And some things to do together, maybe you guys can draw a picture together and draw a picture of a time when you wanted to do the right thing and God was right there with you to help you. And maybe an activity you guys can do at bedtime or any other time, maybe like under, your, under a blanket or under a pillow can be your fiery furnace, and you can choose some toys to throw in there and then pull them out and notice they're not burned, and they don't smell like smoke. And, and you can do those things together. So just remember that God is right there with us. We can trust in him, and he keeps us safe, and he's right there with us through all the things that we go through. And so I hope that encourages you this week. I, I look forward to seeing you when I see you guys around, whether the parking lot services or different things that, that, that we're doing. I could hopefully see some of you in person. It was great to see some, some of you last week at the parking lot service. I hope that can continue. And I just hope you have a wonderful week this week. And let, let me pray for you before we go today. Father God, I thank you for being here with us. I thank you for the love that you have for me, the love that you have for the families that are watching this right now. I thank you for keeping us safe. I thank you for being someone that we can trust in, knowing that you love us so much and you're right there with us no matter what. I thank you for these families watching this, the blessing they are to our church here at Grace. I thank you for continuing to be with us no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have a wonderful week this week.